You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California. Oh my goodness, it is so beautiful here. Sun is shining. The air is clear. Oh, no clouds in the sky. No matter if you're home or outside, you're at the place where you're supposed to be right now. You're listening to what you're supposed to be listening because we have got a very, very special guest by the name of Royce Crisson. And uh, he's an actor, a speaker, a writer, a documentary filmmaker. And he is really terrific because he just wrote this marvelous book called Scripting the Life You Want. And you know what? That's all what we need to hear. It's about manifesting your dreams with just a pen and paper. Well, it's time that we reevaluate everything that we're looking at right now and put to paper what we do want to have happen. So it's the perfect time if you're stuck at home like I am because we're kind of forced to be at home. That's okay. You have time to really get out a pen and paper and start writing down exactly what you would like to see happen. Dream. Do reach for the impossible. Do anything you can right now. It's so important because we love attraction people. We're fans. We're active learners. We are the one that's going to change everything by simply writing out what we would like to see happen. Well, yeah, we like to see this quarantine be over. Done. We like to see our finances in better shape now than they were before. We like to see all the credit and the creditors go away. We like to see a brand new way of living that's totally free of the past. And we can do that. And it's called scripting. So you're going to love today's show. Just sit back, relax, and tune in because this is where you're supposed to be and this is where you're supposed to be listening right now. We'll be right back after these messages. It's here. It's hot. And it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Did you know that every human uses only a small portion of their powerful mind? Jules Johnson, International Certified Hypnotherapist, wants to introduce you to your powerful mind in order to create your dream life. In as little as one session, Jules guides you into releasing limiting beliefs that keep you from achieving wealth, health, better relationships, and even true love. Schedule a session in Palm Springs or set up a Skype video session for those nationally and internationally. Jules would love to serve as your guide into living your dreams. Go to creativeguidedimagery.com or call 951-201-2166. That's creativeguidedimagery.com. You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network, heard by millions worldwide through 38 internet radio stations and in over 135 countries. 
Be sure to sign up for your monthly updates and get all the latest information on LOA radio events such as cruises, workshops, and seminars, as well as information on the latest shows, topics, and guests. Go to LOARadioNetwork.com and sign up today. Well, welcome, Royce Kristen, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm so, I'm so honored to have you here with me. Uh, I'm so honored to be here. I watch Law of Attraction Radio all the time. So uh, hi to you and everyone out there watching. Oh, I, I'm just thrilled. And I just am delighted that you have not only written this terrific book, but thank you, <laughs> but you've also have a story to prove that it works. And I do. I, I have a couple. <laughs> I, I, I do want you to start off with that because that's how it's going to, we're going to show how necessary scripting is in one's life. It's so important. Yes. Uh, I first learned about scripting. People can read it in my book, Scripting Life You Want. Uh, when I was 15 years old, my group of a family where my mom uh, and my grandmother both, they taught me all sorts of new thought and new age and self-help and law of attraction principles from a really young age. So I was aware of the idea of thoughts uh, creating a reality, but it was when she handed me a book called, excuse me, Your Life is Waiting, which was actually written quite a few years before The Secret, 1999. That's right. Uh, I got a copy of it. Uh, my mom was in her front, we were driving, it was a four hour drive for this once or twice a year during the summer, we would go, we lived on the East Coast at the time, and we would drive to this little barrier island on the coast of Virginia. It was called right. Chicoteague. And um, it was just kind of this yearly family sojourn. And I tell the whole story in the book because there's this one critical moment that changed my whole life, which is when she started to read, excuse me, her life is waiting, and she didn't like it. So she, she, I was sort of in a bad way. I wasn't in a really good mood, which doesn't ever happen. I was in a fight, as 15-year-olds tend to get it with, with their friends. So I wasn't feeling really good. And uh, so she gave me this book. I immediately asked for a highlighter. And my dad, had, he was one of those guys that had like this inordinate amount of office supplies in his truck. <laughs> There's like 50 highlighters and 30 pens. And anyway, so by page 100, I had, the whole book was yellow. So I stopped highlighting. And the, <laughs> the, the book was so, I devoured it because it gave me that other key, which I ha hadn't been getting from my mom or my grandmother because it wasn't really written about, which was the addition of emotion and feeling into your manifesting. I had not thought beyond my thoughts, if you will. I didn't think of the idea that our emotions have a guidance system, but also our feelings are like gasoline when it comes to manifesting. And everything just clicked. One of the uh, things that Lynn Grabhorn uh, teaches is in that book is um, she basically took the teachings of Esther and Jerry Hicks and put her own spin on them. And one of the tools that uh, Lynn Grabhorn taught was scripting. Now, I read about scripting. I had a really funny experience right away when I was 15 years old. Uh, it's not the one we're going to talk about uh, with, with Disney Channel, but I had success immediately. But the problem was the type of scripting that most people know about is, or at least back in this is, you know, the early 2000s was you would walk into your car, or your, your bathroom or somewhere private and basically talk out loud like a crazy person. For 10 minutes, maybe pretend you're on the phone with somebody that you, you know, telling them all about uh, how, you know, how great it feels to have this desire or intention. So I liked the idea of scripting. I loved it because it worked, but it only worked for me about 10 to 15% of the time. And I also felt like a nut. Um, you know, a year later, we were living in Los Angeles and I had my own apartment with roommates. And it feels really weird talking about winning an Oscar when you're in your studio apartment that you share with three other people. You know, it just, it sort of, it, it just didn't, it didn't click a hundred percent. So I was really fortunate because I've been an actor my whole life. And, um, you know, I, I, when I went into, when I moved here to Los Angeles, I, you know, I had the team, I had agents and managers, but a lot of people don't realize, you know, I, I was considered successful because I was going out on hundreds of auditions and getting screen tests and, you know, beating out hundreds of people to be the second choice, you know, so I wasn't booking. So I explained this in the book, people go, what about your talent? What about this? Or what about your, you know, you had all these things. And that's true, you can have everything in line. But manifesting law of attraction, and I learned this as soon as I finally had my big breakthrough is something that everybody in this business uses. Uh, just not everyone talks about it. Not everybody calls it what we call it, but it's the same thing. So 
back to scripting. I, I, in other words, I had everything else right. I was doing everything right. And I had, I ended up having sort of a, an experience again, as 15 year olds do, uh, a few months after I first got excuse me, your life is waiting where my friends made fun of me. And I was just like, okay, whatever. So, uh, living in LA a year and a half later, and I tell this during the book, I got mugged. I was <sighs> fine. hundred percent fine. This is why it's so weird. I say the universe mugged me, um, uh, and the stories of the book, but I was 16 and a half, you know, and I didn't want the mugger to see where I lived because it was right, right near my apartment. Only time I've ever been mugged, by the way, in my whole life. So mm. I, I always say this was, this was very, it, I know it was meant to be because here we are talking about it now. So I got in my car and I drove down Sunset Boulevard about four blocks from where I lived. There was this giant Borders Books. For those of you out there who don't know, Borders was a giant, amazing yeah. bookseller. Um, it's sad to have to say that now. I'm only 32, but there were people who've never experienced Borders. I know. Uh, it's like Barnes & Noble. So I was just, I was panicking and in the days that I wanted to go somewhere, there was a lot of people and this is, you know, 2004 or five now, very early 2005. And I, I, I didn't have, I was in such a weird frenzy. I didn't have the thought to call the police. It's that I went to Borders and I sort of snapped out of it. And I looked at, as I was in the bookstore, it had only been 10 minutes. And I looked down, swear on my life, right in front of me, excuse me, your life is waiting. And I just started laughing. I la I was like, okay, guys, this is uh, this is hilarious. All right, I'll buy it. So I did because I had left the copy I had back in, in Philadelphia. So um, I ended up, I uh, got back in my car. And this is, again, how I know it was meant to be. If I hadn't taken this very weird side street and this very weird turn that I never took before, even though it was only a few blocks from my house and left when I did and bought the book when I did, because I basically bought the book and then I got in my car to go back home. Um, I happen to drive by, we're four blocks away in this very weird side street, and I see the guy who mugged me getting arrested for something else. So I was happy. It was very full circle. The guy was, you know, obviously uh, was not up to any good. We know that. But yeah. I got my book. I was totally fine. And I was just, okay, I, there's something in here. So yeah, you got uh, the message from the universe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah. I was like, got <laughs> it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so, um, and you know, I was, I was very lucky to grow up using these principles to a degree, but again, I had, I had kind of left behind now that I knew about the emotions and feelings as I had been made fun of, but now I was living on my own and I was like, I'm doing it. So, um, I honed in on scripting and I, you know, I book little roles here and there, but it, the, the story I tell in the book is my favorite because what was happening is I was keeping a nightly journal, just a regular forensic real journal you know, but what happened, and I always wrote what manifesting stuff I tried out that day. I was in a meditation group in Laguna Hills, and, you know, I just, uh, my my college, I always say, you know, during the day, I would be auditioning or working or in classes, and I would buy 10 or 12 books on manifesting a week. You know, The Secret came out it, here. I remember you, I'm sure you do too, in Southern California, we were kind of the first where it started to to, to, to get a pulse, and it was, it was, it was 2006, and I remember uh, Judith Lekomsky, who's a brilliant writer of crystals, is a friend of mine. And I'm this weird 17 year old out to lunch with these authors who are, you know, older than me and write books about crystals. But she was like, I got this movie, you know, it's called The Secret. You, you would love it. And um, so this was my life in a way. But there was something they don't talk about scripting in that in that movie. They don't really talk. They don't hear about it at all. And what started to happen was I, I would journal whatever I would do each night. And I was in this meditation group at where I had some friends. And it, we did more than meditation. We would just kind of compare notes on, on, on manifesting and what we were creating. And I was just really frustrated because when I would script out loud and sound like a crazy person, 15% of the time, things would come true 100% of that script. And I was, I was going mad because it was clearly the thing that worked the best, but there was something wrong. It was like having a recipe where you know it could be perfect and I mean 100% perfect but you just don't know what ingredient is missing. So finally, um, and again, this is in the book. I hate to keep saying it's in the book, but really it's, it's a lot of fun to read. Um, but the, the, the longer version, I believe it or not, this is the shorter version, <laughs> uh, the longer versions of the book. Um, but a friend of mine said, because I was going, I, would, I need to find the book. That was the thing. I was on a hunt for someone else to figure it out for me. I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but I was really looking outside myself. And a really good friend of mine, she said, we're at my house, she goes, you, you, it's you. you, you have to figure it out. This is something you've been looking everywhere, you've been searching, and I was obsessively searching everywhere, you know, looking to anyone, going to any class to find out this key. And she's like, you're the one, Royce, you got to figure it out. 
And it still gives me chills to this day because something clicked and I aligned. I really got into alignment and I could just hear my inner being going, go, go to your room, go to your room, go get your journal. And I was like, my journal. So I listened, I ran upstairs and I was like, oh my God, scripts aren't out loud. You have to write them and they have to match. I was like, if my, I need to wake up and write out what I think the day is going to be like as if it's already happened and it needs to match my journal. And if I'm good at this and if I'm right, I'm going to figure out what type of scripting, there's a script in here. It's a, I mean, I wasn't acting. It was in front of me the whole time. Of course, it was an actual typed out or written out script. It was a script and it needed to match what actually happened in my, I would say the forensic version at night. And when I figured that out, I started booking roles. But what really got exciting was about two months after I started doing that, I discovered what is my own creation. It's called the 10 day script. And it allows you to insert things that are with my, my with, with my scripting is very, it's a very brick by brick approach, but it's very easy. It's really fast. It's very fun. And it works. Um, so I tell people to include if you have a dentist appointment, put that in there. You need to put in, I always call the magic of the mundane. And there's a scientific reason that I've learned since uh, that actually supports why this works. But I just did it back then because I said to myself, look, if I'm running a day-to-day -day thing and I know I have an audition or if I know I have a dentist appointment, my brain or something's not going to, it's not going to feel right, you know, to the universe if I'm just pretending all that's not happening, you know? So I started to include those things, but about wow. two months after I got that, yeah. I locked into this. I had this inspiration, really, really big inspiration. To it was a it was a, a Sunday night to do a ten day script where I would on Sundays. I I was like the first time I did it. It ended up becoming now you know fifteen year long a uh, uh, wonderful practice of mine. But I would because I wanted to add in things that were not just for the coming day because it's a little hard to think outside of you know yeah. your very very tight twelve hour twenty four hour window when you're only a day at a time. So. I would start to fill in like I booked, you know, I booked this role or I booked this job. And the per very first script I did, which there are actual photographs of, I, I saved all the original journals and notebooks. And uh, thank God I did. So I, you know, from, from house to house, I've been four different places since then. And uh, I always brought them with me. My fiance, who I absolutely scripted into my life. We've been the other eight years. Uh, right. uh, they were always joking, you know, why are you, you're dragging these, these boxes around, but he knows that scripting works. So, you know, it wasn't like, he does it himself, but it was just funny because I had a feeling at one point they would be, they would become very useful and they're in the book. Uh, they're in, they're in here. Uh, the, and they are the real ones. They are not, you know, I didn't rewrite them or anything. They're the actual ones because I would always go back to them because they were, you know, my, my, my key, because my first 10 day script happened to be around a time when there was, I had been going in once again, I had been doing everything else right. But Disney had been calling me in constantly. I was really lucky. Uh, you know, I, I was going in for a show people might remember called Hannah Montana with Miley oh, Cyrus. Yeah, it was, yeah. And this was at its height. It was the biggest thing in the world. And I would go in for, for the boyfriend, going for the boyfriend. And yes, I can play straight. I uh, used, to, used to be really good at it. Uh, as, since I became a writer, you know, I don't have to put that on anymore. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I would go in a lot. And um, there was this amazing actress came on the scene. Her name was Selena Gomez. And everyone in town was talking about Selena her. And she had this Gomez. new show. She had this new show with Disney Channel. It was coming out. It was originally called The Amazing. Oops, my camera was slipping. It was originally called The Amazing O'Malley's. And uh, I knew, I knew I wanted to be on it. I didn't know how she was going to play a Nomali, but um, I had actually gone in for it when it was an Irish family. And uh, again, this is before scripting because shows take a little while, but I heard that it was finally, it was a go. And they, they, they were, they had already started shooting episodes, but they wanted a boyfriend. It was this dream. It was a lead guest star role. Huge, huge part. I had just found 10 day scripting. So I put it in there. Every detail came true. And I booked, that lead guest starring role on which is a Waverly place as Selena Gomez's boyfriend with my script. Wow. Uh, that then parlayed into lots of stuff. Uh, I ended up owning a production company. I directed documentaries. Uh, I found my soulmate, you know, and um, I've had, you know, I was, I was, it, it, it was a good, it was a wonderful thing that had happened at 19. I, I figured this out at 19, which for me was a long time because I had been studying this with my parents in one way or another since I was a kid, but every friend every family member that i would teach this to because it's so easy to teach was having this phenomenal success and at 19 you know i was just i knew i had it i figured it out 
so of course when I turned like 22, I would, I would, I just did, I kind of went through my rebellious teenage years, but not nothing with, with anything, no substances, but just mentally I had this, you know, I've been working since I was nine. So I stopped scripting for like two years and my life fell completely apart, not wow. in a negative, but you know, I just stopped manifesting. It wasn't working. So I kind of did the reverse of, of a, what a lot of people do, but I'm grateful that I had that because the minute I started scripting and I knew I wanted to transition to behind the camera, which ended up being one of these desires I'd always had, which was to write. I wrote for magazines for the last, my God, seven or eight years before finally, very lovingly, uh, Mitch Horowitz, who wrote the forward and a few other friends who had been using this. I, I was coaching. Uh, one of one of the things I love doing is I, I teach real estate agents. I, I go in there and I, I whip them in the shape and I teach because I, I, I have a lot of tools in my toolkit because my belief is that it can be really fun and really easy. And that's the key. My stuff is backed by science. So I love skeptics. Like, you know, I love I love Law of Attraction Radio because it, this is my people. We, we know this stuff works. We don't my feel people. the need. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's my people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there is, for my people out there, I got to tell you, like, you know, doing the research, I, as an actor, you know, I grew up learning how to research. A lot of people don't think of it that way, but that's all we right. do. We are we are taught to just dive into characters and dive into their backstories. So it was really a natural progression to the kind of writing I did for magazines. I was a feature writer for, I did everything from, you know, In Touch and Life and Style to Closer to political articles for Pace. I did everything. And um, yeah. I ended up, I, I knew, I knew it was going to end up here. I, I was a little resistant to this, this inner desire because I, you know, I was like, would people accept me? Would this be, this is a, a couple of years ago. Um, but I started, I, I helped a lot of uh, these, these, I was, I was that person who was going around helping. I still am, I guess, but you know, it's, it's been a little bit uh, different the last few months because of the book schedule, but uh, you know, I would help CEOs and companies. I was, at the top of Sunset Boulevard, it's the, one of the the absolute the, the the pinnacle of real estate companies. I ended up being their like in house coach, and I, I was having amazing success with any new agents who would come in. And I don't work there; I would just tell them, teach them how to script, and do a one day workshop. But everybody finally one one uh, one of my two actually one of my best friends they they ganged up on me a few years ago. They said you need to teach people this because people need to know. And I wasn't hiding it; I was I was nervous so. I finally just, it was a desire. I want, I wanted to write it about all of these things. And I love, I'm a nerd. So the research aspect is one of the things I was good at. This is why they said that I, they, they were encouraging me. And I know that I'm good at this, but it's going to sound cocky, but you know, it's okay to own, I think what you, you're good at. I'm a really big science nerd. My best friend in the world is Dr. Dina Grayson. She is, she worked on the cure for Ebola a few years ago. There's only two cures in the world. She invented it. She actually endorsed the back of the book. So oh, wow. there's a, a lot of science in this book. But as someone who, like I said, this is my people, I have this thin floored. It is like a newer passion. I always love science, but I am able to explain why so much of this stuff works that we didn't have the science even 10 years ago to explain. That's right. Such groundbreaking stuff has come out and it's all in my book. So I love that. You know, I love skeptics. I know people will say, oh, law of attraction is hooey or it's crap or it's whatever because they could pick up the book they, I, and I tell people uh, who, who are like that. And if anybody out there listening has a friend or family member, as we all do, who think this is all junk, I say, get my book and start at chapter six. It's only 10 chapters. Uh, it's 200 pages, but chapter six, really, there's a divide in the book where it's all science. And I say, read chap have that person read chapter six and seven, and then have them come back to you and tell you that it's all crap. Because what has happened now, it's been funny. It's, the book's only been out uh, about a week week now a week uh a week not even a week a week tomorrow wow. uh, but we had a lot of people you know there, there's a whole process and i'm new to the book world it's a lot of fun uh there are some some similarities to hollywood some not but you know they they, they send out copies to to wonderful hosts yes. like you and to reviewers and they 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 send it out and i've had more than one person come back to me and say you know i had an uncle i had a friend who he really just thinks this stuff is is crazy but i read chapter you know the second half of the book and i i couldn't believe you you know what would happen uh, with them they they had a total transformation and i did that on purpose because i wanted not only people who maybe you know are on the edge about law of attraction or people who who love this but have bad luck you know people yeah. don't like to talk about this in, in the law of attraction world you know i'm really open and honest about it i got i got a really weird email uh, a month ago from someone who reviewed it and when it they didn't want to talk to me because i I, I dared to say that if people, like, we fail at this all the time. Law of Attraction doesn't work a lot. And my whole goal was to inspire people 
and show them the way of why it doesn't work and give them tools for it to work. And that's what the book does. So yeah. I was able to pull from the science world and, and hopefully start shining this light of a bridge between uh, not just quantum physics, which here has been overused and kind of cherry picked, but everything, there's audiology, we have, we have the reticular activating system, the neurology, there's memetics, there's all these areas of science that actually back up not only why this stuff works, but when we dig into it, which I did for everybody, I spent about three years reading textbooks and papers so you don't have to, uh, it teaches you the tools. I was able to get the tools out to give people the tools to fix their law of attraction and their manifesting so that it works for them if it hasn't been, or if there's one thing I, I know for me, um, really up until scripting, uh, and then even after scripting, I was great at manifesting money, I was great at manifesting love, but my friendships, and I would just have really weird relationships with people. There's just different things that you want in your life that sometimes you, you're great at three of the four areas. Right. So I finally, in the last few years, was able to go, I kind of, you know, donned that little Indiana Jones hat and dove into that science world and, and just tried to figure out maybe there's something here. And boy, was there. Everything was there that we've been looking for. And I, I say this in the beginning of the book that, you know, uh, we in the new new thought and the law of attraction community haven't been looking at the science stuff and the science community hasn't been looking at our stuff. And I was just out there on this. I'm not saying I'm the only one. There's a few of us, but I was stunned. It was so lonely out there in this weird world. I was like, oh, oh no, we all have the answers to fill in each other's blanks. And we haven't been talking with science and spiritual worlds. And I really hope uh, this book helps do that and make that bridge. But I mean, beyond yeah. all that, Beyond all that, it has a lot of amazing tools that I was able to grab from the scientific world and give to people out there who struggle and give to out there to people who want to supercharge their manifesting, you know? So, so, so do you get into the specifics, the little details, instead of just looking at the future as to what you want, you manifest it within today. Yes. So we do both in my, in, 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 in what my uh, essential, my toolbox is. So you every morning, it takes about five minutes. It's very easy. I have people write an intention list uh, and all this is in the book, but you write your intent. This is everything. This is not for the day. This is all the intentions you want. It can be three. I always say three to seven has to be in that range, but some people write 50. I'll write usually 20 a day and you want to frame it in in, in, with using those words, you want to write, uh, I'm really stuffy today. I apologize. My allergies, anybody out there, I'm, I'm a little bit more nasally. Uh, I'm gay, but I'm like sounding real gay in my feet. So I, you could laugh out there. It's okay to laugh. I can hear myself right now, but oh my God. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. You want to do a, a daily intention list. And, and the reason uh, you want to write it, at, I call it a want list, but you use the word intention. So, you know, I intend to healthfully weigh 145 pounds or whatever that is. I intend to uh, easily find multiple streams of income. I have all sorts of examples, but you write it down as I intend to book the lead role on uh, XYZ show. I intend for Law of Attraction Radio to be picked up in 190 countries. I, you know, I intend to have a good day. You know, it can be as simple as that. And I encourage that. It, it can be as big as you want. I encourage that too. So that's number one. So you have a notebook that is, I call the manifesting notebook, right? And you have a journal that's just at night. So in the morning you do a couple wants or intentions. Uh, that's your first, that's your first thing. Second is you're going to take a look at that list. Maybe it's seven things and you're going to pick two of the things that you believe and don't fake yourself out. It might only be one, but usually people have two or three or more, but I, it's just two and you're going to do a belief list and you're going to take those intentions on your want list and you change it to, I know I will weigh 140 pounds. I know today is going to be a good day. And you are reinforcing to your brain and to your body and to the universe that you now have belief and you're doing this every day and it's really quick. It's really simple, but my God, it works. And then page three, you date. So today I know people out there who might be watching this hopefully 20 years from now, but today's date is, I believe, April 13th, 13th, yes. 13th 2020. So this morning when I woke up in my notebook, I wrote my want list. Then I did my belief list. I knew this interview was going to go amazing. I intended for it to go amazing. And I wrote out uh, really funny to be totally transparent people out there. Um, it's always good to have a little, as much info as you can. I uh, didn't read the email and I didn't realize this was video. <laughs> Duh. 
So um, <laughs> I came on here and she said, where is your, what you, you asked me, where, where are you? And I, I looked like I, I stole a bedhead because I've just been running around doing interviews on the phone and I go, oh my goodness. So in my script this morning, I put that, I, we got along fantastic and, and the show went fabulous. And guess what? I have been wanting, this is really cool, to do more video interviews. That has been on my want list for about two weeks. I've done like 30 on the phones and maybe two other ones that were video. So I scripted actually this going perfectly and this is how the universe worked. It threw in that this was a video. I just didn't read the email right because I've been reading so many so quick. <laughs> But thankfully, you're so wonderful that you you gave me that extra 20 minutes I needed to set up the lights and make sure my office didn't look like a mess and that I didn't look like sideways Charlie here. And um, I, I actually, you know, that was my script. That in, and today is a really easy day for me. Um, I'm working on my office and we're just doing some stuff. We built actually a film studio in the back of my house because we're going to be doing, uh, a, it's not a podcast, it's not a radio show. It's going to be a little bit of a mixture of things with a, with, a, with a really cool twist for people who are stuck at home right now. Uh, it's, it's interactive video, so it's going to be really neat. That's going to be starting in the next few days. So oh, I'd love for you yeah. to come on my show. I'm bringing sure. everybody I talk to and it, yeah. coming on back around because it's going to be a lot of fun. But um, So that's my day. So my script was really easy today. And then tonight in my journal, and your journal is always the forensic, I call it, version. It's, it, you can't lie. It has to be just what happened. If you had good stuff, bad stuff. But you find after you start scripting, after it's between two days and two weeks, those entries, what you wrote in the morning and your journal at night are almost and many times completely indistinguishable wow. from one another. So tonight I'll write, I'll include the, the funny little gaff that I made, but I'll also write, you know, that I thought this was audio, but I'll also say, but, which I do when something awesome manifests. But the coolest thing was it was actually a video interview and we got along great and, the, and, the, and everything went fantastic, which is going. So that's, that's the day-to-day -day stuff. Now on Sundays or Mondays, you could pick your day. I explain the reasoning in there for those days. Uh, Sundays tend to be the best from the people that I coach just because it's a day that people have a little bit more free time and, and you do your 10-day script. So in the morning, you just do your wants and beliefs. It takes two minutes. You don't script. That night, in place of journaling, you're going to do a 10 day script. So you just go in the, you know, look at your phone calendar. Okay. What's 10 days. Okay. So it's usually a Wednesday because people do it on Sundays and you will then write out it's, and it's, 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 it's a, it's a really easy process. It probably has two extra steps and people could read how to do it in the book, but you know, I like it. People are stuck at home right now. So I know what to do. So I'll, I'll give them the, the, the nuts and bolts. You write about a, it's, it's about a, four to five and this is just notebook pages i i still use my old school need i probably have like 10 laying around my desk right now yep here you know need a uh, wide ruled 70 subject i mean just easy 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 stuff um it just isn't complicated some people like their computers some people use their notes in their smartphone make it whatever you feel you well, type well that that brings up the question is it more effective to write it out or to type it out so a lot of people have said and told me personally that, uh, especially people who love to type, that they have the same results typing, but they end up enjoying writing more. I, I'm the same. I did, a, I did a test about, let's see, in 2016, where I, and I do this to myself, I am my own guinea pig, and so is my mom and my dad live three houses down from me. So my whole family are always my guinea pigs for manifesting, which is a lot of fun. So we did a year. Uh, in 2016, where we, none of us were allowed to use notebooks, even for a journal. I just wanted to see, knowing what was coming digitally, if it made any change, good or bad, it was completely, there was no difference. Um, I, though, I like, and you know this, focus, you know, what you focus on gets bigger. So to right. me, writing it by hand, some people, those, they, my mom types really slow. She does it. She types it now because she focuses just the, the same amount of time because she's a slow typer. You have to find your own rhythm. I suggest people start with a notebook. They're less than a dollar or they start, you know, if they don't believe any of this, start on your phone, then, you know, don't spend any money. <laughs> just, you know, start oh, yeah. out easily. Um, but so, notebook uh, versus digital, no difference in what's manifesting. Personally, okay. I have found in my coaching, people end up at notebooks, paper journal, paper notebook in the morning. So I think it be is because you really kind of get to, to milk it a little bit more. You're in it. You get to just focus. And, you know, we're so used to typing yeah. fast. Um, I would suggest, you know, I, you can use your phone. But if you are going to type, you, you use your iPad or your laptop because at least you're not getting distracted by notifications yeah. as much. Yeah. Um, 
but really, you know, I, I, it's not complicated. It's easy, easy, easy. Well, let me ask you another question. Now, how important it is it to write your emotions? How, like Dee Wallace, you know Dee. Mm -hmm. Of course. She always said that if you want to manifest, you get really excited and going, ah! got it i got it she shows up you could just see d doing yeah. that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but but you know truthfully i tried it and it does work so where does the emotion when we write so here's the best part i okay. it's so funny you mentioned d okay so yes uh the first two chapters i talk about the importance of emotions because that is something that I have to remind, I had to be for about the first three years I started teaching people. Cause you know, for us, it's so ingrained that you have to emotionally get into it. Right. I forget, I was forgetting to tell people, I was just jumping right in. And ah. finally this amazing, it was actually at, it was at, uh, I don't want to say the name of the company, but it was at one of the big, 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 big real estate agents. And this girl, uh, I think she was from Russia. She was so nice and she loved the class. I do it at a, I have my own version of a vision board. It's called a picture script and it is, uh, it is wild. It's the whole, it's chapter 10. It's the end of the book. It's really fun. Very oh, different wow. than, a, than a vision board. Um, and, uh, she came up to me though in this class, she goes, uh, cause she knew what she was in the, this stuff and she studied, she goes, you forgot to tell people about feelings and emotions. This is about four years ago. I was like, <laughs> Oh, you're right. Hey everybody stop what you're doing. Let's circle back. You have to feel <laughs> these things. So yes, it's really important. That's why, though, I personally found it much easier for myself to do day to day. It's a lot more believable to believe and get into the feeling place of having a good day. And on your 10 day script, you've already been you don't start if it's a Sunday and you're reading the book and you're ready to go. You're just going to and I write this in the book. You just do the one day script. You're just going to start. You never want to start with a 10 day because you want to have about that six day lead up to the big day. Because once you get to 10, you're really feeling your emotions, you're putting them out there. And it's easy because you're seeing things manifest very, very quickly over that first week that you are excited. You know, I've been excited for, my God, a decade. I feel like, you know, um, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a different way of feeling it um, where you're not screaming out loud. I, I love that. And, you know, I just, anybody out there listening, I, I, I'm kind of a realist at that it's not always easy. Like, and, and, and yeah. at least for me, it's actually harder sometimes because, you know, being an actor from ages nine to 23, you, like I can fake it so well. Sometimes I don't even know, you know, as far as being out loud and really screaming it, you just get so lost in it. Now, uh, Abraham Hicks had a really interesting, uh, uh, I heard it on YouTube about, it was an actor asking that question because my question was always when I was playing dramatic roles or, I ended up always usually playing really happy or goofy or funny, you know, sitcom, hilarious comedic roles. But I think that's because that's what I was attracting. Because whenever I would do something really dark or even in class or I would I have a screen test for a movie, I didn't like the stuff that was coming out in my, because I was seeing results in my, in my regular life from stuff I was doing because I was so focused. So uh, Abraham Hicks though said, you know, if you're in alignment with acting as what's fun, you put on this character in the suit, then you take that off at the end, it is in alignment. You're not going to contradict. I wish I would have known that, you know, back then. Now I do. Oh. But um, it's still, you know, people find it hard sometimes to, to push it out. And then if you're really good at it, like a lot of my friends who are still actors, they find it hard to differentiate between, is this a character? Am I just, because I have, you know, friends, I have friends who've won Oscars. You know, they can cry right now in command and it's crazy to watch. But they're, you know, so they have their emotional, their emotional system is, is wired and, and most actors are a little differently, but that helped me a lot to teach the everyday uh, person who's not an actor, which, oh my God, what a weird profession that actors pick. I, you know, I, I should know, I am one of them. Uh, and I have, I'm, most of my friends are not. And, and it really helped to, to see and realize like, oh, wait a minute, it's, it's a lot easier to do day to day. And then we get to the 10 day, you are really feeling every emotion because you're now used to, you're used to now writing at night, your real journal, and it starts to feel so good and so real when you're doing your wow. day to day and your 10 day. It's, I would say it's a, it's the most natural way to get into a genuine feeling place that lasts for days. If you miss a day scripting, I am not some hard head who's like, you need to start over. I actually found out I was, 
I believe, you know, I believe the science that used to say 21 straight days, you know, and if you skip the day, you know, that's how you ingrain your habits. Turns out that's totally not true. Mm -hmm. There are all these researchers and studiers and people who, who look into this and they realize you can miss two or three days. I'm not suggesting you do that, but my biggest thing, I don't want, I know how much I beat up on myself as uh, you know, a young man going through this. And I watched friends who studied this just absolutely get themselves into this tizzy where they would be mad at themselves for, for, for missing a day of whatever they do for their manifesting. And then they'd be mad that they were mad. Yeah. You know, you get mad at yourself. Yeah. I say just, you know, go with the flow and scripting allows you to find your flow. And anybody out there who doesn't love writing or thinks this sounds like a lot of work, honestly, it's like one or two paragraphs. It's so easy. And I tell people in here, if that's too much, start with a sentence. If you feel like you're getting bored with scripting, I tell people to stop for a day or two and I give them some tools of how to, how to switch it up a little bit. This is so, that's the best part about this, this system that I had. And and I, it actually expands out next year where uh, I have, a, I already finished the second book, which is called Scripting Your Environment, because I You know what's so neat about this? I love the aspect of journaling before you go to sleep, because one, that does a couple of things. It gets you in a great mood. Yes. And it gets you focusing on what you want to have happen. So it's like, that is a win-win combination right there. That's what people need to be doing before they go to sleep is journaling. Right. And the thing about journaling, what actually happened during your day after the first two days is that you are so focused on all the good things you're reaffirming to yourself and to the universe that this works, manifesting works, and you're reminding yourself of how great your day was. It's just the coolest thing. Um, there's actually, I cite uh, two different psychologists and, a, and, a, and, a, and an amazing scientist in here who talk about the actual, there is so, there are so many clinical scientifically proven mental health, uh, uh, just amazing things that uh -huh. happen when you journal at night. It's provably a very good thing for your mind. And especially when we're on lockdown or on quarantine or self, uh, they have, there's so many words for every, every state has a different word for what's going on right now. Um, you know, and I always say like, uh, you know, the book was written, you know, it takes about a year and a half to go through the whole publishing thing. But, you know, I, I wrote it at the end of 2018. And I wrote in the introduction, um, which was also one of those things people in, uh, in our world sometimes get a little bit weird about. I know just personally, they feel like it's like the, the taboo thing. But I write, um, let's see here, it's right on, it's right in the introduction. And it's, I think it's on page, uh, here we go. It is on page five. There we go. Um, I say to people, look, am I going to say that this is going to cure your disease and just cure everything? No, go to the doctor. Well, I wrote that in 2018 because that's just a personal belief. I believe there are miracles and there are incredible healings that people can have when they are in total alignment. And right. that is not the, the majority of us at all times. And, the, you know, there are... A lot of people who dismiss the law of attraction because you have, uh, you know, certain people, I'm not going to name any names, there's certain people who don't do this, but there's a lot of this perception, at least out there, that we're all out there saying, just think happy and you'll cure your cancer or think happy and you'll do this. And I start the book by saying, look, it's not going to cure that. So this book isn't going to cure the coronavirus, but, <laughs> but this book will help and it has helped already. I've, I've gotten the most incredible emails from people. I've been so lucky. Uh, it helps with your spiritual health, your mental health, and it gives you something to do. Scripting you can do in your house. That's the best thing. And you can actually see results around you, even if you're on lockdown or self-quarantine or, you know, we're all being asked to stay at home. It's something different to do. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I think this is perfect because we are in a captive situation. Why not work that time for something that's going to really help our future? We got the time now. And, and the tool. Uh, and the I'm tool. Also, <laughs> if, if anyone's watching this week, um, I, I, I don't, do you have, a, I, of course, I'm on my phone using this. Uh, if, you have a, if you have your phone in front of you, I don't have the date off the top of my head. This Saturday, so let's see, 14, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think it's the 18th. That, that 18th. sounds right. Yeah, is that right? The Saturday. Yeah. So on April 18th, 2020, um, if you go to eastwestbooks.org, or you could go to my, uh, you go to my website, which uh, is going to be linked, I think, on the YouTube at the bottom, which is just my name, right. Royce, like a Rolls Royce, Christian, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y-N, it's a weird one, <laughs> dot com. 
Uh, we're, I'm doing a class actually that is based on the sequel to this book, which will not be out till next year. But oh. I, I want it to, I'm not making any money off of this. It's to support one of, if, if anyone out there, uh, if you've been in this community long enough, you know East West Books is the biggest metaphysical bookstore in the entire country. I think it's the second in the world. They're fantastic. They're up in Northern California. Um, and I, I, I reached out to them because I just wanted to do something that would help you guys out there uh, support some local stores that are in our community. And also, I want to be able to give everyone out there something that they could use now on top of the, the scripting in their notebooks. And my next book is Scripting Your Environment. So even though it's a year off, uh, anybody who joins, it's really, really, I'm not getting a cut. So we were able to keep it really low, 25 bucks a person. Wow. Um, we're we're, we're going to actually go through, it's a two hour class. It's going to be so much fun. I am so excited to tell everyone out there and teach them how they can actually use scripting and apply it to their house. And we're all stuck in our houses right now. Yeah. I had this aha. I was actually supposed to teach a class on picture scripting, which is a lot of fun. Um, that's something we talk about in this book. And then it hit me. I was supposed to teach that the other day and I, I called East West and I said, guys, I'm going to talk to my publisher, but we got to do it. We got to do this because it, it, it gives you guys a, a lot more people who I think are going to be interested in, in working on their house. So many people are, are just doing little things here and there. You don't have to be physically fit or it's nothing crazy, yeah. but there are some amazing tools and things I've learned. And it actually, uh, it works with the flying star school of feng shui quantum physics Ooh, and, yeah, and like scripting that. and it's really easy and it's really fun and we've actually been I, I it's funny because I just finished the, the draft that went to the publisher and the way that works is uh you know there's about a, a three-month period where they say yes and that's all good but I am still finishing one of my last uh I would say experiment on my own guinea pig like I said so I've been working on this for about two years and it, it, it actually to me uh and Marie Diamond who was in The Secret is one of my heroes. I have never met her, but I love her. I have taken every class she has ever offered online. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but she's right when she says that our environment many times for people uh, can be a missing piece in our manifesting. Because if your environment isn't supporting you, then, and you're doing everything else right, then, you know, that's an issue because you don't have that 100% thing. So scripting yeah. already in my book, scripting like you want, it goes there. Uh, scripting your environment takes you totally there where it combines my tools with uh, feng shui and some really out there uh, new science. So if anybody, this. if any, I would love for you to come. Um, we're also, I'll tell you this, if you join the class, this is not some gimmicky thing. I was just trying to get as many people to pay the $25 that it goes to that store because we want to keep stores like East West open. And I always say, um, you know, if you're going to buy my book, uh, Amazon and Morton's and Noble have it. Every all the big box ha retailers have it, but if you go to my website or on Twitter, uh, it has the Simon and Schuster link, which actually gives you the the way to see what local bookstores you can order from. And most stores have delivery; they'll walk out to your car. So I'm encouraging anyone who buys my book, please, if you can, if you can't, no biggie. But if you can buy it locally, buy it locally. Call your local New Age bookstore, or Crystal Shop, and see if they'll bring it in because it's it's available. We're really lucky uh, with inner traditions. My the imprint of Simon and Schuster, they can get it anywhere. So yeah. um, I wanted to support, I wanted to do something that, that was, that would help people. It's fun for me. It's fun for you guys. And I'm actually, I'm doing some really cool stuff. So if you join uh, this coming Saturday's class, I'm offering usually a couple hundred bucks, but I'm doing uh, a giveaway. So we're doing four sessions. So four different people are going to get private coaching with me for free. And we're just going to yeah. draw it live on, on camera. We're also going to do um, a couple, uh, we have these, I don't have one in front of me, but uh, the ARC, which is the advanced reader copy of the book. They're very rare. They only need 80. Uh, they send them out to wonderful hosts uh, like you. <laughs> and um, that is, I think we had 10 left. So I, I signed it. So we're going to do some book signing giveaways and we have some other special stuff. So you can actually get coached right away at home on scripting your environment with me. If you just come to the class, we're going to draw the names live on camera. So it's going to be really fun. And we're going to do a couple other giveaways. I'm just trying to figure out you know, I'm encouraging, I'm doing this to get people to join the class so that that store, which is one of the, we need stores like that to stay open. Yeah. Um, so any enticements I could, I could give out there to people to join, I, I'm, I'm giving. So, um, and there'll be a few more workshops coming up that, that uh, you can find on the websites, uh, lockdownbooktour.com, roycechristian.com. Um, but for this one I'm talking about, uh, you can go to my website, you can go to lockdownbooktour.com or eastwestbooks.org. Okay. They have the information. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Now, I want to ask you one last thing. 
Because Ask away. Oh, I'm so yeah. sad. I've had, this is the best interview that I've had. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to all the other interviewers, but I've been doing this for like, I feel like two months straight, the interviews, and this is my favorite. So, okay. <laughs> I have I to come it. back on. <laughs> yeah, you will. You'll be coming back on. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell because you mentioned it in the PR thing, the new movie, Dare to Dream. With I know. Oh, How crazy. How crazy. So now my quest, I mean, I love it. First time it's really going mainstream in the theaters. I love it. So it's, it's wilder. For people out there who don't know, my book came out April 7th, 2020. And we found out we had a call in December that The Secret, written by Rhonda Byrne, the feature film starring Katie Holmes, comes out April 17th, 10 days later. I still get goosebumps because I scripted it. Well, one, I had two things I was scripting all year. I wanted it to come out on my birthday. I never told anybody at the publisher. My birthday was April 6th. It came out April 7th. I got that news in August. And I wanted it to be in conjunction somehow with something like The Secret. I didn't even know they were doing a feature film, let alone starring Katie Holmes that came out it's we were 10 days apart so that comes yeah out this week. my book out came out last well week. <laughs> well i just talked to the pr company because we're promoting the film and they had to put it off because we're all yep, because of what's going on but that's yeah, okay yeah. because it's going to be huge we have been promoting it so I'm my so question excited. to you my yes. question to you is when are you going to do a movie a law of attraction movie because now is the time and I people to. need to know about this stuff so here we go i you know what i'm gonna do okay i you're the first person to ask me this question uh i believe it or not i had a production company i know it's funny it's right there i think it's in my pr bio they said oh, i had my own film i directed documentaries which this would be you know um i am doing i mentioned a very cool uh, it's a whole show that is going to be talk show style. So we have drop-in guests. That's all fun and good. Uh, it's actually going to be in 360. So you don't need a VR headset, but you'll actually be able to interact and actually swipe around the whole studio from your phone or from your iPhone or your computer. It's a very interactive experience oh, that wow. we're doing because of that's part of the lockdown book tour. But uh, I have been, I have been working uh, on a way right now to, possibly make this into a movie because it just feels like the natural the natural progression and I'll tell you what's really funny I I, I, I say this at the end of the book there's actually a twist ending I don't want to give it away but it, like a like you would find in a really good thriller uh, there's a twist ending at the end of this book for uh, anybody out there listening um, and uh, it, it just has to do with the forward of the book so make sure you read the forward but um, I originally I actually wrote which I guess is now the third book. I wrote a book that was being put out there when uh, Mitch Horowitz, those of you out there who know who he is, big new thought scholar, he said, you got to do this, this book first. So this book came out first, but my, my first book, it, it, was a, it was a package of a film, a documentary and a book. So I realized very recently, and, and you are the confirmation, I think that uh, I, you, that was a, a cooperative component there, as, as, as Abraham would say. Uh, you, I've been waiting to hear that message. I've been putting out there. I know the right time will come. So oh, there yeah. is a way to do it with the lockdown. And, I, and, and if I do it the way that I'm thinking of it, it'll be free. So for people out there, because I have all the equipment, we have the studio set up. So uh, in the meantime, people will have uh, almost daily, I'd say at least three or four times a week, uh, a TV show that they can watch uh, on YouTube or it's totally free. That'll that'll just be the equivalent of having if the secret was a TV show. So that that's what we're wonderful. working on doing. And, and it's, it's not going to be talking heads, which I love. It's going to be I just wanted to do something different because people are stuck in their houses and I got some really amazing stuff and thank God that I kept all my production company equipment because I have a whole studio worth of oh stuff and I, yeah, so I'm excited. So I would love to do documentary and thank you for uh, being that, that, that person that, that got that from the universe. And hey, <laughs> look, look, now is the time that people have got to realize everybody is manifesting their future they and are. why not make it a beautiful future. And this is, we're all being given, uh, it's not, I always say it's not a reset. It's the only, I would, I, my whole life, my grandmother actually, who, who really is the whole reason I'm here, and she's the one who started teaching me this, she always said to me, sometimes the only way out is through. So I have said to people this week, and this is my mantra throughout this whole coronavirus, is the only way out is through, so let's make it a breakthrough. 
I love it. I love that. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. It has. Oh my God. I'm so glad you guys are promoting Dare to Dream. I'm so excited for them. I oh, talked yeah. to Rhonda's sister, uh, uh, Glenda, who is amazing. Um, I talked to a lot of the team. I've been in and out of communication with them. They're so so amazing. Um, oh, yeah. I haven't, and met then, the PR, I haven't met the PR team. I've, I've talked to the secret people from on that end, so I'm sure they're just as lovely. And, and as there's amazing. also Thoughts Become Things. Yes, that, that's the Marie Diamond, I think, yeah, is in that. It's uh, Doug Vermeeren, who is, it's his movie. And, oh, and that's airing on the 24th through a link, just like The Secret did. So oh, I and love it's it. I love going it. to be on Law of Attracts Radio Network, the link that everybody can click on to watch that. It's Bob Proctor, all those people. Oh, that's great. That, yeah. You know, it's crazy. The man who did the photo shoot, really famous photographer named Walid Azami, he did the photo shoot for me for this book, which is on the back cover and on my website. He is he shot Bob Proctor uh, for his last three books. So if you go oh on that gosh. website, the Bob and I, I it's it's so fun. the law of attraction. I it's... mean, we're all in this mess together. <laughs> I was, I, I'm such a baby though. I'm 32. I was just so excited to finally. I've been doing this for 30 years, but I'm a baby. Uh, you know, it's like coming out of the closet again. Uh, so here I am, and I, I'm, I'm I'm grateful. Everybody's been so amazing and kind and welcoming, and I I you know these are all my heroes. I mean, these, I. I I, I was saying off screen, uh, to, is it is it Julie or Jules? Is it Jules? Jules. 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 I, I said to Jules, I was like, I actually watch Law of Attraction Radio on YouTube all the time. I literally, this is not a joke. I have had it on just different episodes here and there all week. That's just my thing. That's why I said, this is my people. That's why I don't know how I didn't realize this was going to be a, a, a video uh, interview, but it worked out. <laughs> It's and I so script funny. it literally what I've been wanting long term. That's the cool thing about scripting is I've been wanting more video. I had, you know, I wasn't even thinking about, it. I guess I let it go and I got it. And thankfully Jules was kind enough to get, we were supposed to start at 11 and I said, give me 10 minutes and 1121, I came back on. And um, we've had the best interview, uh, the, just the best talk. I was, we could talk about anything. So uh, uh, when well, you're coming back on, we're going to do this, but we got to end this now. But I know <laughs> such a pleasure to meet you. And you I feel too. like we have established a good bond to just keep on growing. So yes, yes, yes. And I, and out there listening and watching, thank you. Uh, your audience numbers are amazing. I always read the comments and I always go on the website and I was, you have the best audience. So you guys rock out there listening and, and watching. <laughs> Subscribe to Law of Attraction Radio. Sign up. Do anything you can do because they're awesome. I'm not even pushing my own stuff. Like I teach this stuff and I learn from her. So I learn from the hosts on this network. So please like support Aww. them. We need to right now. <laughs> you are so sweet. Okay. Well, all right. and <laughs> that's all we have for today. But thank you so much for coming on, Royce. You are so good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you guys for listening. And it's not goodbye, just goodbye for now. And remember, the only way out is through. Make it a breakthrough. That's coronavirus. It's a breakthrough. That's and right. And you have every tool at your disposal. So let's use them. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.